Hey folks, it's Ari from Real World Explosion and you are watching A Connection TV. Crazy mouth, shit your mouth, shit your mouth, shit, shit your mouth. What is going on, world? I'm Wesley from A Connection TV, the network, the one channel on YouTube where we actually adopt similar connections despite our differences. And this is going to be a, an interesting review um, because. World World seems to be encompassing everything that I'm going through emotionally with in regards to me liking someone, me feeling for someone, and them not feeling the same way for me. It's hard, it's, it's um, hurtful, uh, it's depressing, it's stressful, you can feel somewhat insecure about yourself, and it is just not a good place for your heart to be. And besides that, battling with everything else in life, it just makes it harder. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Excuse me. When, when you're going through other issues and then you have this particular issue where everything else would feel so much more okay if you were to re receive um, an emotional uh emotional energy from a person that you're feeling or into or have ish history with or whatever the case may be. This particular episode is called Burned to the Ashes or Burned to Ashes. <laughs> I don't know if they were referring to Ashley. Um, I went to the MTV studios two weeks ago and it was very, it was, it was fun to be around the people behind the scenes that edit the videos. I saw a little bit of the reunion, which is awesome. Everyone looks phenomenal at the reunion. And it's just interesting to see how they separate the cast and how they put things up and, you know, how they, how they organize who they're going to show and who they're going to give the limelight to and their true opinions of the castmates. <laughs> I'm not going to say too much about that experience um, because I really wasn't supposed to be in the studios, but I was there and they were very candid. And let's just say when cameras aren't rolling, you find out great information or you just get to you get to know what it's like to be behind the scenes. So it was fun. Um, but yeah, I think that title was for Ashley. So shout out to Ashley. Um, we start this video off with Thomas going to pick up his brother, Steven. Um, at first glance, I'm thinking that Steven looks better than Thomas, but when I start to see them together, it seems like Thomas has more weight on him than Steven. And so, I don't know. Obviously, they're identical twins, but you can tell them apart, not only by the hair, but by the physical, by the... By everything, by the smile, the attitude, you can tell them apart. But it was interesting to see that Tom had Thomas had an identical twin and they went to go pick him up at the airport. I thought that was cool. Uh, it's a nice element to bring family into the house, so I was excited by that. Apparently, Steven never likes Thomas's girls and, and, and Thomas never likes Steven's girlfriends. Um, so Jamie felt, uh, was a little nervous to meet Steven. Um, when Steven first met Jamie, you kind of got this vibe like, eh, <laughs> whatever. And then right away, Thomas, is, Thomas uh, mentions Haley, and Steven's like, oh, I like Haley. I like Haley. So I was like, oh, that's kind of jacked up. But I don't know. Towards the end of this episode, I was really, te I was really team X's this whole episode. Like, it's really, really crazy. We get to the house, Haley's speaking to a friend, telling her about last night and about how she got drunk and about how she feels bad about it and so forth and so on. Steven gets to the house and Steven talks to Haley and Steven is like, 
a comfort pillow for Haley because oh god doing these reviews are it's adopting similar connections despite our differences like I can honestly connect with these individuals in this house and I'm trying not to get emotional right now uh but Steven starts to speak to Haley Okay, we're gonna do this over. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try this one more time. Um, Steven gets to the house and he meets up with um, Haley and he starts to talk to Haley and Haley explains, you know, I was drunk, I got caught into my emotions and I overreacted. And Steven starts to laugh and he starts to laugh because he understands Haley. He starts to laugh because he cares for Haley. And, you know, this is not a new storyline for him. So that's why he starts to laugh, because nothing has changed. Um, but Steven was very comforting for Haley, and, and Haley definitely needed that. I, I, I've been in Haley's position. I've been in Brian's position. I've been in Jen, no, Jenna's position. Um, yeah, I, 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 I get them. I understand them. And you know what? I have a I have a different outlook to this particular show now. And 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 mainly because I can adopt similar connections despite our differences, but the the power of emotion is strong. When you feel for someone, you feel for them. Nothing can turn that away. Nothing can turn that off like that. Not unless you just don't have a heart. There are some cold individuals out there that <clears throat> aren't in tune with their feelings and aren't in tune with their emotions and can definitely just tune you out at a drop of a hat or at a flip of a switch. I wish that I could be that way, but I am not that way, okay? And Jenny, Corey, Thomas, Jay, they are that way with their exes in this house and it's insane to me. It's insane to me. I just... I don't understand. I don't get it. I really don't. But, you know, it was nice to finally hear and to really think about it that none of the OG members would actually be there if it weren't for their exes. So... That makes me feel some sort of way for the exes too. And you know, it's it's funny, it's funny trying to hear, not trying to hear, but it's funny hearing Brian say that he wants some attention from Jenny and that, you know, they had this intense conversation and then she goes and calls Ashley and then he's a little jealous about her calling Ashley and so forth. It's, it's, it's nice to see a big ass muscle bound dude be a complete punk softy on TV because he wants some attention. And Brian's not the type of person that needs to get attention from just one chick. He could go out and get any, all sorts of kinds of attention from any chick, but he's choosing to, to get attention from Jenny. So it makes me feel empathetic a little bit more because it's not just for the camera. We saw that he has the opportunity to go out and meet girls. But the past two, three episodes, he hasn't done that. And although we continually hear him say that he has these dreams about how horrible Jenny is and so forth and so on, when you have an attachment to someone, you have an attachment to someone. And Brian's in a, a crazier position because he's in a house with a dude that banged a girl that he was in a relationship with. There's no way that Jenny would be able to, to handle that as well as Brian's able to handle his particular situation. And so, you know, watching this episode with the whole Haley situation, was Haley in the right for how she acted when she was drunk? No, she wasn't. She wasn't at all. But this is not an ordinary circumstance at all. Granted, she, she, she opted to go to the house there was another ex that they interviewed. Obviously, Haley was the better suited ex over the other ex that they interviewed for Thomas. So she opted to go to the house, but I think her intentions um, were to get back with Thomas, to make something spark off with him because this is an ex show. You know what I'm saying? So I don't fault her, but 
And especially if you have sex, if you had, if they had sex before him coming to the house, it's kind of like, don't you hate when people do that? Don't you hate when people sit, give you mixed signals and they say it's this way, but it's completely another way? I can't, I can't really do this review, y'all. I can't really. I'm fucked up. I'm fucked up in the game. I really am. But I'm, I'm a. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Just gotta have to excuse me. I, I just can't, can't get through this video. I'm gonna tell y'all like this. I'm, a, I'm gonna break it down. Haley, I rock with you. I feel you. I completely understand your pain. You were in the wrong for how you reacted when you were drunk, but. I get it because you're caught up in your emotions. Emotions mixed with alcohol is not a great situation. The way that Thomas reacted to you, he was drunk too and he was pissed. Pissed from his past situation and dealing with you, but also he was drunk. So two wrongs don't make it right, but y'all were both in the wrong, I feel, in this particular situation. When y'all were able to come back and talk it over, I think that was cool. How Thomas was able to allow, allow himself to say, you can stay, you can go, it's completely up to you. I will support your decision either way. I thought that was big. A lot of the times when we have feelings for someone else, we just want them to know that they care. That they freaking care. You know what I'm saying? When you share something with someone, you just want to know that the person cares. You don't have to be in a relationship with them. You don't have to be boyfriend and girlfriend with them. You just want to know that they care. So I completely, I can, I, I am happy that Thomas and Haley were able to come to a mutual understanding before she decided to leave the house. And staying in the house was really emotional um, and, and alarming and stressful for her, so I completely understand her leaving. Jenny and Brian. At first I thought Brian was a playboy, but now that I'm starting to see him, he's a complete big softy. Okay? Um, and, and it's attractive because he's a, he's a beautiful man, but he's a complete softy. Now, I don't know, I don't, like I said, you know, Ariel in the interview said that he's not putting on, it, but it's still, it's so hard to believe that someone like him could react the way that he's been reacting to Jenny. It's just, it's hard to fathom, but if it's true and it's authentic, I'm completely down for Brian, and I really understand Brian's position and how he feels. He's he's caught up in his emotions. He has a freaking thinking journal or what to do next journal or whatever it's called. Um, so I feel for 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 Brian. Jenny, I like Jenny, but I think Jenny is doing way too much, and I think she's doing way too much because she was hurt. Should Jenny forgive Brian, it's completely up to her whether or not she wants to. I'm sure they have a past, one that we can't even um, uh, talk about because we don't really know about it. But I'm sure that they have a past. And, you know, she said that when she's trustworthy and when she wants to be with one person and be faithful, she's able to do that. But the fact that he wasn't able to do that after having that conversation with, with her, she's like, I'm done. You're not going to just play me on national TV. So I completely understand and empathize with Jenny and I understand and empathize with Brian. I get both of them, to be honest. I don't think Jenny should continue to aggravate him and to egg him on and to throw water on him and to all that. But like she said, being around this dude 24 seven can really aggravate the fuck out of your nerves. So I don't fault Jenny and I don't fault Brian. I just don't. Um, Jenna and Jay. I feel so bad for Jenna. I really, really do. I, I really, really do. I like Jay as a person. I think he's cool from what I'm able to see with him on TV. But the way that he, the way that he was going after that bartender, when all the dudes are like, dude, like it's really not that serious. You need to chill out. But the fact that he feels that he needs to prove himself as a man to get numbers and to get emails and get contacts and all this, is really, really not cool. It's kind of sad. And I just don't understand how, well, I can understand why Jenna puts up with it because she likes him. And when your heart likes someone, your mind cannot turn it off. Your heart has to be able to turn it off and it's very difficult to do. And so seeing Jenna cry over Jay, I can empathize with her. I really get her. Jamie got on my motherfucking nerves when her drunk ass was on the phone and the lady clearly said, Jamie, hey, call me back, blah, blah, blah. And she got all up in her ass and was just like, Psst, Jay got a girl and the girl said, Jay, call me back. And made this whole situation worse. 
I wanted to see, I wanted to see the after show where Jay found out that Jamie caused all that aftermath. That shit is just crazy to me. Like Jamie, Jamie just needs to mind her business. She needs to mind her business. It is none of her business. Period. It is none of her business. She needs to mind it. That's how I feel about Jamie. I just, I, I don't get her. Corey is playing devil's advocate with everybody's situation. He doesn't have Lauren to deal with. So he's cool. He's like level-headed cool. And then we get to who else is in the house? Ashley. Ashley visiting the house was pretty interesting. When when she saw everyone, she was like, everyone was like, ugh, why is she here? Um, and Jay was real. He was like, I don't know if I should hug you or kill you. But, you know, at least she received some love from Thomas, and she kind of got the hint that when they really didn't want her around, she opted to leave. So that was cool. Um, I guess Jimmy really never had a problem. Yeah, never really had a problem with Ashley. That's why she invited her out. Um... I don't know. What else to talk about? Steven, Jenny calls Ashley, gives her the tea. Ashley asks how the bed's done. Brian is jealous. Jenny, Brian is annoyed. Jay speaks to... Okay. Jenna has the title of girlfriend now. I don't think that that's all that it's going to take for Jay to change. But because you have the title, you feel better. Whatever makes you feel better, I'm all for it. But at the end of the day, we have to be realistic. You has been, you've been with this guy for two years now. He's already cheated on you. Being Holding the title as girlfriend does not change anything. It's like when people think that if you get married, that changes the person. If they, if they are heartfelt and traditionally understand what the, the purpose of marriage is for, then yes, it does change the person. But it's like eight out of every 10 people really just get married just to get married just to say that I have this title this piece of paper and that's not what it all needs to be about I'm sorry this this review is kind of like scatterbrained but I'm going through a lot right now and talking about relationships is not really something that I want to talk about because I'm all up in my feelings right now so I get it I really do get it but hopefully y'all were able to get through this review and hopefully you shared and tweeted on Facebook and Twitter and like this video and leave comments below adopt this similar connection with me Mwah.